All right, welcome back. I hope everyone's had a good year so far. I have a couple announcements, just quick ones. Um, let's see, so the first thing I wanna talk about is, well, uh, MF Doom passed away last year. And like a lot of people, I got very nostalgic, started listening to a lot of his music, and then I realized that I've learned so much about music through his music because he samples so much stuff. So um, I went through all my records and looked through everything. Anyway, so I made an MF Doom um, sample set list for Worldwide FM art from radio and uh yeah i update it every month but this particular one is music from that i discovered through doom mf doom um vic vaughn just all his side projects and such so if you're interested in listening to that i'll have it linked down in the description box and i do believe they posted a track list because they don't normally post my track lists for some reason so if there's ever a time where you're listening to one of my set lists and um, the song isn't marked, just let me know and I'll send it to you because I always want to credit the artists, obviously. Next, so I think it's either um, today or tomorrow, but I sent my clothes to this shop called Series. They're based out of Texas and um, they just have a bunch of different curators um, collaborate. So I sent some vintage clothing and some other clothing, mostly jackets. Um, for them to style and take photos of and post on their website. So my collection is gonna be available if you guys wanna shop. I sent in a bunch of like dagger collars, like this kind of collar, um, like jackets, vintage jackets and such. I've just been really into this type of collar for the past few years and um, yeah, I keep finding it everywhere I go. So I have a huge selection at home. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna let these go. Um, I'm going through and looking at all their stuff right now and I mean, it's shot very well. The styling, the f f photographing, and the, even the set that they have it on is right up my alley. So that's why I decided to send my stuff there rather than just do it myself on Depop. Oh, if you listen to podcasts, my friend Katie Dalebout interviewed me a, a month ago, maybe a little over a month ago. It's my second time being on her podcast. So I'll have that linked as well. All right, let's get into the favorites. So the first thing I wanna talk about is this book right here. This my friend Raymond Molinar made and um, it's Polaroids. It's throughout the years. It's him and his, well, it's dedicated to his son. So it's a lot of photos of his son and his past relationships. And I really like that all the photos are on, they're all one by one, so side by side like this. They're perfectly aligned and um, so Raymond Molinar, if you don't already follow him on Instagram, then I think you should, but he is a phenomenal photographer. He's actually, you know what, one second. So Raymond Molinar, you can see it right here. My boyfriend wrapped it up because I just moved and I thought it was so funny so I just kept it in the saran wrap. But So Raymond Molinar was a professional skateboarder and it's so funny because I went out to a bar once, and this is a side story, but I went out to a bar once and Raymond showed up. We were just hanging out and talking for a while and then this guy that I was DJing with was like, he got really quiet and he's normally like pretty loud and chatty and stuff like that and we we're trying to talk to him. And then he's like, you know what? I had a photo of you on my binder when I was in middle school. Like, I really like your skateboarding and stuff. So I thought that was really interesting. But anyway, so Raymond Molinar was a professional skateboarder and because of that, he was able to travel across the world and see, you know, new sites and take cool photos of everything, right? So then eventually he just pursued his photography and um, yeah, so stunning photography. He, he actually did some video work for Una Airs, the clothing brand, and they shot this short that was just phenomenal and he shot it on film. I wanna say he shot it on Super 8 or 16 millimeter, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, he's just an incredible artist. So if you're not following him on Instagram, I think you should. But yeah, he came out with this book and it's, it's so sweet because even though I don't, I've only known him for a few years, even though I don't know much about his life from these photos, I feel like I've learned a lot. And just through seeing like his relationships and like um, his family and there's a lot of photos of people and I love photos of people because I just think people are so interesting. There's a photo of Gonzo right here. It's kind of cool with a bloody hand. Um, lots of photos of Towns, his son. Such a cute kid. Um, 
Yeah, I find it really inspiring because um, I'm so used to taking photos on my phone, obviously, because I always have my phone on me, just like the rest of you, right? Um, and because I have my phone on me, I kind of just spray and pray. I shoot a shit ton and I don't really put that much thought into it. And this is a great reminder that um, you should shoot with intention. Next thing I want to talk about, ooh, okay, so a few years ago, when the when AirPods first came out, I got the first AirPods and I was so excited about it and I've had it for years. And then last, oh, no, 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 yeah, last year, I was at this restaurant called Joy and I was out front and I was wearing this trench coat and there was a hole in my trench coat, in the pocket of my trench coat. And I had my AirPods, not in the case, just directly in the trench coat, right? I fell through, I lost them and yeah, so then I was so mad at myself because I had those AirPods for years and I was just so mad at myself for losing it that I just promised myself that I would never get another pair of wireless headphones. And then these happen. These are from Bose. They're just so great and I hate to say it, but I, I mean, I can't live without them now. Um, they're wireless headphones and they're a little bit bigger than the AirPods, but they fit way more comfortably. And they're sound canceling or noise canceling. And you can control the noise cancellation too. So if I'm, say I'm hiking around my neighborhood and I don't feel safe um, not hearing stuff around me, then I can lower the noise cancellation. Um, if I'm at home and I'm just cleaning and stuff and I really want the noise cancellation on just so I can hear all the music and stuff, um, I can do that too. If if it's super windy outside and I can't sleep, then I can put the noise cancellation all the way up and yeah, it just works so well. And I like that they're a bit chunkier than the regular AirPods. And I love that they're noise canceling. So these have been such a great life improvement and I don't know what I'd do without them now. I've been using, like before that I was using these guys um, after my AirPods because I just wanted to kind of like punish myself in a way, right? And the sound quality on this isn't nearly as great as just the regular AirPods. And then when you compare this to these guys, these are just just infinitely better. You can hear chimes, you can hear like all the different stuff. It's kind of like listening to music. When people say that listening to music on vinyl just sounds better. Um, and it sounds so pretentious, but it really does sound much better than just these type of headphones. Um, yeah, for years and years, well, for a long time, like out of high school and stuff, I was working for just a bunch of like different retail stores and like different clothing stores and stuff, like the Gap and such. And they always use Swiffers, you know, like the stuff with this handle mop and everything. I just kind of got used to buying these. And um, a few years ago, I bought a ton of it, like so many that up to this point, maybe it's been so it's 2017, so it's been almost four years. I'm finally on my last one. And then I realized I have to buy more. And these aren't great for the environment. You just throw them away and they're just not great, you know? So I'm, everyone's trying to do their best, right? So then I looked up and this took no time at all. I just Googled super quickly what's a reusable uh, Swiffer replacement, right? And this popped up, it looks like a pad. <laughs> And it goes on, so it's, here, let me just compare it for you guys. So it looks like this. It's got microfiber right here. And it goes on to your Swiffer, just like the regular Swiffer, right? But you can use it. It picks up way more than the regular Swiffer. So um, yeah, this has been a great life improvement for me. I know this is a bit much, but I Swiffer my place. Um, usually like once a day, like once in the morning. And I always pick up a shit ton of stuff. So if you're using a Swiffer, I know a lot of you guys are, and you're looking for an alternative, um, just look up Swiffer replacements and anything with a marker fiber. You can actually even use just a regular marker fiber cloth and then just tuck the sides in, just like a regular sheet. Um, I was doing that for a little bit too, and that works perfectly fine. Um, this just fits so well and it kind of locks in there so you don't have to worry about being gentle. Such a great alternative, works really well and it keeps my house clean. On that subject, I just got this razor. It's called the Twig Razor and it's not out yet. I um, supported their Kickstarter campaign so I got early access to it. So what it is, it's a safety razor. So I started using a safety razor earlier this year and um, I fell in love with it 
it's so easy and the blade stays really sharp and you can replace it easily without going through so much plastic. For years and years I was using um, disposable razor heads and I'll go through a cartridge like every week or so. It's just a lot and it's unnecessary so um, I started using a safety razor with a safety razor blade and at first it was super intimidating just because the razor blade itself just looks scary but I got used to it and then I actually shot a video on my reviews on the different types and there's this one brand called Leaf Razor that I didn't really like because it was just kind of finicky and then that company came out with this called the Twig Razor and um, I got an email about it, I saw it and I was like well that's interesting so then I ordered one. This one's great and I think it's the best one out of all of them and I love that it's so small so basically what you do is you take a regular razor blade and there's a whole video on how to do it but you take a razor blade you snap it in half in the paper so you don't hurt yourself so this is half a razor blade and then what you do is you just kind of put it in and it's magnetized so it just kind of hooks up in there and then you wind it close and it's tight and the angle I think it's like a 45 degree angle it's just perfect um, it gets into tight spots it stands up on its own which I really like um, so I just have it in the shower like this and it kind of dries up on its own. It's a great close shave. The angle makes it really easy and I love that it's smaller so that it can reach smaller spots. Yeah, so if I could start over and just recommend one safety razor, I would say this one. It's just perfect. I have the matte black one, which I think is beautiful. And um, seriously, zero complaints about this. I just love it so much. I shot a skincare video a couple weeks ago and um, in that video I featured this right here and a lot of people commented on that. It's a little spatula thing like this and what you do essentially is you wet your face and then kind of just scrape it across the skin or just pull it across the skin. In the video I show like a better description of it but it dislodges, this is disgusting, but it dislodges all your blackheads and I had a lot of like little like dark bumps right here or pores, clogged pores, because it came with a 20 times mirror when I got it. I was able to like dislodge all of that and then when I looked back in the mirror it was all clean. You can also use it as, uh, or flip it over to use it to apply your creams and serums and such, but I don't even do that. I just don't really have a need for it. The exfoliation extraction side is just phenomenal. I think this is great for someone who really likes to use those nose strips, you know? I found out about this through Rachel. She was just raving about it so then I knew I just had to try it and I've just been hooked. And it's so easy to use too, so yeah, I love this. In the shower, I've been using this right here. It looks kind of disgusting, but it's the Glossier Exfoliating Soap Bar. It looks kind of like a pumice stone. It's gritty, so it doesn't feel great when you put it on your skin, but it seriously exfoliates everything, so if you put it on. So I had what I call strawberry legs, like up on the top of my legs, I started getting these little bumps and usually whenever I get that it's because I've been wearing pants for a long time and I'm not letting my skin breathe and I have a lot of dry skin build up and anyway, so I've been using this on that and it exfoliates away all the discoloration and everything and just kind of leaves my skin fresh so that when I apply lotion it penetrates deeper. The soap dish is from Joanna Spicer, she made it. I think it's the cutest thing ever. I use it about twice a week. Um, I feel like I have a pretty substantial amount left for using it twice a week for about two months now. You know what, I'm just gonna take my makeup stuff over here and kind of just go through what I've been using. So this is my little makeup caddy. Um, let's see, what do I have here? Oh, this right here. So this is a new eye cream or eye balm from Cure Vice. And it's kind of like the texture of a lip balm. So it's so different from any other eye cream I've ever used, but I've been putting this with my makeup because what I do is I'll apply it all over my eye and then put a powdered eyeshadow on and it kind of just sticks so it works really well as kind of like a makeup base but I know it's also skincare too. I'm not usually someone who loves eye cream so this is just great for me. And then one thing that I've been using so much is this right here. This is the bronzing brick from Make Beauty and it's the color Taos, which is their darkest color. I was using the color Marfa for a while there. I use it for eyeshadow as a bronzer and 
um, a little bit on my lips too as a lipstick so it's a little bit more on the red side there's no shimmer to it and I don't know it just has a nice warmth to it it's not like a cool bronzer so if you're looking for something to contour with I don't think it's great for that but it's great for warming up the face oh for lip oil I've been using Kosas this is the lip oil in the color dip it's kind of like a mauvey or like a bricky kind of color and I really like this because it's a lip gloss but it's not sticky it's moisturizing it smells good it's got a little bit of shimmer to it so a little bit sparkly um for my foundation so I don't wear foundation every day I know a lot of you haven't been either but I found out about this actually Rachel gave me this um she was using it and I'm like what is that and she's like you know what? I think I have another one so why don't you just take this one so she gave me this, I've been using it. It's a tinted moisturizer from this brand called Say. It's called the Slipcover Sp Broad Spectrum SPF 35 Sunscreen. I just really like it because it doesn't have too much coverage. It's got just enough. Uh, the shade I am wearing is four and I'm usually around an NC 25 to 30. Ooh, for mascara. So I've been using this one from Glossier for years. And then I just got this one from Bite Beauty. So. This is for volumizing. I really like the wand on this because it's kind of like an hourglass shape and it coats all the lashes and just makes everything look so big but also separated. It's beautiful and it's a nice contrast to this too. I still love the Glossier one but this Bite Beauty one is just different and great and doesn't clump and removes easily. Just a great all-around product. I'm trying to see if I have anything else that's worth mentioning. I guess I don't. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is this jacket right here. It's from this company called Meals. I got a pair of pants from them a few months ago and I really love them. And uh, I just got this work coat. Look at this label. Isn't that adorable? But I just got this work coat. Um, this is actually Maddie's because we both got the same exact work coat, but in different colors. I got it in the color lavender, and she got it in this green color. And then when she got it home, she realized that all her jackets are this color, so then we ended up swapping. But um, it's just a great work coat, and I've been doing a lot of ceramics, and I need something that can get dirty, that I can wash easily, and then also has a lot of pockets so I can carry around my tools and stuff. And I love that this is a little bit on the baggier side, so that I can wear sweaters and hoodies underneath it. Yeah, I just really like this work coat. I feel like everyone needs a good work coat. Yeah, so those are all my favorites for January. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.